and uh, I don't know what you call it, theme music, sound effect. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you spell it either. I, you know, it's funny going or, online, or the background looking of a that Prince up. Album. Yep. <laughs> People like spell it differently. It's like, is it C H like ch ch ch, or is it K I? I don't know. People have different opinions. Yeah, the captioning guys just say spooky sounds. They just give up. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome to Hollywood Blockbusters. I am your host, Joe Hollywood. And once again, I am joined by Imaginos Pete. Hey, hey. Andrew Walker. And <laughs> remember, there's an audio portion of this oh, podcast. Oh, yes, as I am well. here, yeah. folks. <laughs> Silent era podcast. Using hand gestures. <laughs> and of course, George Johnson. Hello. All right. So yesterday was October 1st, and that's when I automatically switch into Halloween mode. And uh, this is the time of the year where I enjoy watching spooky movies, what I call Halloween movies, something you might pop in at a party, you know, a Halloween party, that sort of thing. Uh, now, as timing would have it, you know, we do this podcast every two weeks. Um, we will be doing three podcasts in October. I just, yeah. that's the way the days fall. So we thought it'd be fun to dedicate the next three podcasts to Halloween, but we thought, well, let's, instead of doing the same thing over and over, let's break it down in to sub -genres. So today's episode, uh, we decided we're going to talk about slasher films. Uh, slasher films are enormously popular. Yeah. And I'm always surprised on social media and Facebook, people who love films, collect films. I've seen people have an entire collection of just horror of just slasher and i don't know if i could immerse myself in that world like some of these people do um i enjoy them this time of the year but my goodness i'd need to get away from it after halloween comes and goes yeah so here's a question i want to uh posit to you guys um how do you define a slasher film i mean for me personally there's usually, you know, one main antagonist who goes around slashing people uh, at random. Uh, they may or may not get their comeuppance at the end. Oh. And, of course, uh, if if it is left ambiguous, then there's always the inevitable sequel. So, mm -hmm. uh, Nick, what do you, what's your definition of a slasher film? For me, the slasher film, I borrow from pretty much whatever the Hollywood suit list says. Okay, we need... Young nubile teens near remote location. And we need someone with a revenge story, someone whose mother was uh, wronged, they were wronged, or their family was wronged, and uh, they're here to get revenge. It has to be revenge only because the killer was wronged by someone or yeah. their parents. You know, it's interesting you bring that up, and we may have talked well, about oh, this. Well in said, the past. by the way. Did yeah, you just crank no, it that is. out on the spot. Fantastic. <laughs> did you do like a re like a, a he's a human uh, essay on this? I know, man. You memorized awesome. it from Wikipedia. There it is. <laughs> Look at Badaya, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what you just said, I think we've talked about on the podcast before, that I think the most in in interesting villains are ones who have a reason, a motivation yeah. to do what they do. And in some cases, you might sympathize with them. But in most cases with slasher films, they're just you know homicidal maniacs that yeah. really don't have any motive whatsoever. So. If I may. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. the original one, 1974. Yes, yes, yes. yes, Some, yes. Someone vandalized my grandfather's grave. That's not a motivation to go check it out. You call the police and say someone com committed you know, some nonsense. You don't go out there and investigate <laughs> it and say, oh, look, there's a crazy guy with a chainsaw coming after people. My thing is, it's Texas. Everybody's got a gun. <laughs> Everybody's got a gun. The baby comes out of the womb with a gun. <laughs> before it gets a birth, issue. Before it gets a birth certificate, it gets a gun. You know what's interesting is, you know, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a history lesson, and a lot of people may agree that Psycho might be the first true slasher film, even though there might have been things before that. But what's interesting is with Psycho and 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 Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, and Hannibal Lecter and all that stuff, uh, Andrew, I think we've talked about this in our previous podcast that we used to do, that a lot of these were inspired by real life events, yes. specifically Ed. one lunatic named Ed Gain, Ed Gain. Uh, who didn't kill a lot of people, but he had a weird habit of uh, desecrating graves and yeah. uh, and uh, bringing them into his home and uh, making uh, uh, accessories Jewelry. and furniture and things out of yeah. stuff. So uh, stuff that only TJ Maxx would sell, <laughs> or Spirit Halloween, maybe. I apologize, um, TJ Maxx. But isn't it weird to think like, would a 
slasher genre exist, and maybe it would have come eventually, but it sure seems like the big bang of slasher flicks started with movies inspired by one individual who yeah. was a psychopath nut job. That's kind of fascinating. And it all, it's, it all started like mid to late 70s. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, well, there were other films before well, that. Well, I mean, like Vincent Price hits, was, uh, yeah. I mean, live and well in the 50s and 60s, and, and there was a lot of B-rated stuff that doesn't make it onto a whole lot of movies, and there was an um, there was implied... I mean, even the blob had people that were like, you know, what? but that wasn't slasher. It no. was building up to it, I think. Yeah. yeah but yeah. but I think there is something that's an interesting distinction, and that is, is in, in my head, when I think of a, of a slasher movie, there is the ones where somebody just goes nuts. So that's Halloween or possibly Jason or whatever. And then there's other ones where uh, there's a supernatural element mm -hmm. where, you know, like Chucky or something, or, you know, well, the one with the, what was it called? Phantasm or something with the big oh, circly yeah. Yeah, things. I forgot like, about that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and those are cool, but the closer they are to reality, the scarier they are to me. Oh, I agree. And the ones that have the supernatural element is just kind of cheesy. And especially, <laughs> um, it's interesting because I had a friend when I was a kid, I said, um, we were talking about heavy metal and back in the eighties, there was a, there was a couple of years where the music was kind of satanic and everybody said, this is a real problem. Everybody was, you know, singing about hell and I'm going to go to hell and Satan's got, you know, what a Dio is a big deal, black Sabbath. And, um, he said to me something interesting. I think it applies to here. Uh, he basically said, these are far and above more effective for people who have had a strong Christian upbringing mm -hmm. because to them, they've been taught to, that there's a good and a bad and that you can, and that the bad has evil powers. Like Satan has evil powers and, yeah. so, and he's, and he can use them and he can tempt you. But not only that, he can have terrible things happen to you. And so they play in more heavily to that narrative. Whereas people who don't really go to church all that much just go, where the heck did he get that power? Yeah. So I think it's kind of interesting for me. I was brought up on a very Christian and for the first few years of my life, I one of the first things I ever saw was the, the exorcist, which we no spoilers. We don't want to get into that, but yeah, that was for me trauma traumatic oh yeah so. yeah that's terrifying for anyone who went to catechism or sunday school or whatever <laughs> yeah, exactly. to see that movie <laughs> and i i remember the first time i saw it i turned the, the light on my in my closet on when i went to bed like it was terrifying <coughs> yeah and how old were you oh gosh five. it came out what in the 70s yeah so 70s. I, was, I, was, I was probably 10 15 something like that that's a movie you don't watch under <laughs> when you're a kid you do not <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's funny you bring that up because uh, I wanted to tell a little backstory here. So I grew up in Hamtramck, Michigan, and on our main street there, we had a one a, one of those old one-screen movie theaters called the Martha Washington, and you saw whatever was playing on that one screen, and there and it was it wasn't necessarily a first-run theater. We would see things a little bit after they had been released, but there was a lot of schlocky B movie horrors like. You know, uh, squirm, which was about these weird worms, and and all the I <laughs> saw Jaws there, but then like every knockoff of Jaws played there, like uh, tentacles and uh, uh, orca uh, and all this stuff, and so I saw Snout. everything there. Now, one of the first slasher flicks that I remember seeing, and and looking at the dates, it probably is the very first slasher flick I ever saw. I was ten years old. When I saw the town that dreaded sundown. Oh yeah! Now this came out in 1976, and it was written by Earl E. Smith, directed by Charles B. Pierce, uh, based on a true story. Uh, 1946 Texarkana Moonlight Murders, uh, committed by an unknown killer. They never uh, conclusively found out who did it, but the press uh, nicknamed him the Phantom Killer, which is awesome for a movie. Um, and, uh, it scarred me as a 10 year old. Like I, it still kind of freaks me out a little bit. Yeah. Those um, ratings are there for a reason, Joe. Right. But my mom was like, you know, the movie screen was my babysitter. So whatever was playing, whether it was the town that said it dreaded sundown or, or animal house, I, I was not fault your in there watching these. Progressive <laughs> now, an interesting little side note about the town that dreaded sundown, uh, Dawn Wells, Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island, has a role in this movie. What? Uh, she survives an attack, but her husband was killed, and that was based on a real-life uh, event that happened. So it's interesting little footnote that our beloved uh, Mary Ann was in this movie. 
Um, and on a $400,000 budget, it earned over $5 million. And I think what affected me so much as a 10 year old is it was shot almost as if it was a documentary. So it had a very real feeling to yeah. it. And, I need to see this. Yeah. 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 And the killer, uh, the real killer and the killer in the film wore uh, like a, a bag or a pillowcase over his head with eye holes cut out of it. Um, which was a uh, reference to in Friday the 13th part two, the killer in Friday the 13th part two wore a, a sack with a hole in it. So that was inspired by the town that dreaded sundown. But yeah, imagine a 10 year old kid sitting in this theater. I'm sure there were other kids from school there and stuff <laughs> watching what is one of the very first slasher flicks uh, in that, what they call the golden age of slasher flicks. And, now, the one movie, you guys probably liked it more than I. I. I may have seen it when I was younger. I haven't seen it since. But in, unless you count Psycho, which I want to talk about in a little bit. Sure. But the movie that kicked off this golden age of slasher flicks was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That actually came out two years before uh, uh, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, 1974, uh, written and directed by Toby Hooper, uh, partly based on the crimes of Ed Gain. And uh, earned $30 million on approximately $80,000 to $140,000 budget. Love made it. $30 million. Oh, total independent. Yeah, exactly. That and would have just rocked that's people. That's one thing about horror films and, and, and slasher films is you could make those on a shoestring and budget. The Bruce Campbell movies. And uh, some yeah. of the most profitable movies yeah. ever. The Blair Witch Project, one of the most profitable oh. Oh, yeah. movies ever. Ever was just provide. a simply made <laughs> horror story. That paranormal, that, did you already say that? Yeah, yeah, but that was more for gimmicky purposes than actual horror and content. That, I was upset. That movie, I'm not, <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not traumatized. You didn't, you didn't see it at Sundance like I did in 93. Interesting. Or 90, 98. 7 or 98, yeah. yeah. And the reason it was weird is because it was told that we it was a documentary and it scared the living mm. heck out and of that's us. that's what I that's was a, on my what seat. This is success. when I was in Salt Lake, right? I was in Provo. <laughs> I had yeah. my I had my legs up like this. It was insane. It was because okay, they lied. They said it was a documentary, so that's why you're they probably like, oh, did. that's the thing. It kind but of gave birth to found footage. Yes. you know the found footage thing, which had been duplicated many, many times since. Yeah. and a lot of people bought into it. A lot of people went in a theater thinking they were looking at real people documenting this experience. See, but that's like going and showing like Godzilla and saying, you know, telling people in Japan like this was like a David Attenborough, <laughs> you know, planet Earth. Look, we found it. <laughs> and then the beast comes and blows fire and destroys the city. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, what, at Sundance, what was the interesting thing, and I wasn't there for this part, but I saw one of the, I, I had a friend of mine, he said, you got to see this, you got to see this. So we went and sat through it. And about halfway through, I thought I was going to faint because it was so real. I'm like, well, what's going on? And the, she, the girl's crying and everything else. Who knew all the things that were going on? But what was really interesting is, is that when they had very, very, very first shown it, the word had never gotten out to yeah. anybody for any reason. And so I'd kind of heard a little bit. But when the people that had been, quote unquote, murdered walked out, the whole, the whole uh, audience just gasped like, mm -hmm. <gasps> <laughs> like it wasn't true and it was so amazing to them but anyway sorry go ahead yeah no so so basically getting back to the texas chainsaw massacre that gave birth to the the golden age of slasher yeah. flicks that ran through the 70s and 80s and then became sort of a tiresome genre before it was revived later which we're going to talk also, about. also like kind of like we were talking about in our previous podcast when you don't know who did it it's because it was someone important we don't know who killed all these people. Police know. It was either like a, uh, someone wealthy Connected. or it was a town or a politician. You're like, no, we don't know who did it. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, we know. But a phantom killer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just the press gives them that cool yeah. ID in the paper, like Jack the Ripper or whatever. Yeah. Joe, real fast, though, yep. I, I want to just comment on something. You said the golden age of slasher flicks. Mm -hmm. And you have to really think about that. The, the golden age of slasher flicks... Okay, so that means that this is kind of the birth of slasher fix, but it also, it, is that what it implies or it just implies that, that, that these are the really, because it's, is it the golden era and it's also the birth kind of of the genre? Well, I, I don't know if it's the birth because like I said, we can go back to Psycho, which I, I personally believe is the yes. first yeah, yeah, real yeah, yeah. pop culture slasher flick that went mainstream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But f 
from 1974, like I said, into the mid 80s or so, I had read somewhere that there was like a hundred or more slasher flicks that came out over that period. And, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis became the screen queen where she was yeah. in Halloween and she was in prom night and, and all these other movies. And uh, man, every weekend there were new slasher flicks in the theater. And, and then they were building the lore that gets referenced and mocked by the 90s and scream when they say, yeah. remember has to be a virgin. Yeah, they established yeah. all the rules yeah. and everything and who, you know, what order were people going to be eliminated. And so these rules were established and Hollywood just, you know, beat the genre to death until people got tired of it. And then as with any genre, like Westerns or whatever, they yeah, get revived a little bit later. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about some of these cool. movies that, you know, came out during this golden age. Um, now, before before I get into more of these movies that came out in the seventies, let's let's talk about Psycho. Uh, Psycho came out in nineteen sixty, I believe. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie, who you know was just known for his uh, psychological <laughs> thrillers and everything. But there was something about Psycho that just you know made people afraid to take showers again, mm-hmm. you know, and. Uh, and so Janet Lee, who was the mother of Jamie Lee Curtis, it's kind of interesting how things, you know, come full yeah. circle. Uh, she starred in it, even though she, the, one of the cool twists of the movie, and I don't think I need to say spoiler alert if you haven't seen Psycho yet. Come on. Yeah, but I only just saw it like recently, <laughs> a month and a half ago. <laughs> but you, I think you commented on the fact yeah. that, you know, this movie was promoted as a star, star vehicle for Janet Lee, and then she's like offed. Halfway within the through. third, third, first third of the movie, yeah. which, uh, imagine being in the audience going, "What?" Like being so shocked by that. and the way she was, you know, taken down. Try and imagine Hitchcock going, "I don't know if we're going to get away with this, but we're going to murder this woman naked in the shower." Like that had to have been unheard of at the time, and the censors were like, "What? Yeah. No." They had a field day with it. Yeah, and he had to kind of almost bribe them to to get a yeah. pass, yeah. And what's interesting about that, and trust me, I did this more of it as a film buff than a pervert, but I looked <laughs> I looked at that shower scene, and it doesn't reveal anything. No, it doesn't. Cut, 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 yeah. and different angles. Well, she's, and, wearing a, she's wearing a, a suit, right? So she's, I don't know. I don't know if she is. Yeah, I, don't know. But, I think she's wearing a flesh-colored suit, yeah. I, I but believe. But everything's implied. Like, nothing is explicit. Nothing is shown. It's all Regarding implied. the suit stuff, I hope that's not part of it. Hitchcock's darker nature. <laughs> if you hear about this, he's like, no, I want you to be naked. <laughs> it, might, it might be. Well, I think the interesting thing about the naked part is that you could argue like, oh, it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of, no, it's not. It's when you're at your most vulnerable. vulnerable. You're exactly yeah. right. And yeah. that's, I think, when I saw it as a kid, because I saw it on TV, believe it or not, like they were, and it just was, it was horrific. And they even had a thing that said, be careful watching this. It was like 1978 or something like yeah. that. I said, be careful, you know, this mm-hmm. is a, you know, if parents should watch out for kids. Of course, I heard that as a kid. I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. I'm like, oh, I'm front <laughs> no, and center. Oh, I that's mean, a, that's a great point about being naked because you wouldn't go like, we must hunt Dracula. Frank, are you going to wear something? Or are you, you really <laughs> going to walk in there? You and Dracula be like, good God, sir, have some respect. I've been around for centuries. Cover your shame, sir. <laughs> well, when you uh, picture, picture those like horror comic books from like the 50s and stuff oh. where scantily clad women with yeah. Dracula ready to bite into their neck like they always the try to combine romances always have these large the sex and, and women violence and yeah yeah so, exactly yeah. so so yeah that they always went together and and uh so definitely uh, Alfred Hitchcock was exploiting that why um, did he pick Penelope because she was a d-cup Bob <laughs> <laughs> Russ Meyer uh girl um, so yeah, it, uh, it grossed, uh, on its release, $50 million on an $800,000 wow. budget. Of course, highly rated on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, 97% from critics, 95 from audience. Now, like you, Andrew, I, you know, this isn't something I, I watched as a kid on a Saturday matinee or whatever. I, I watched Psycho for the first time in its entirety later on in life, probably in my forties, I think is the first time I saw it. And I do agree that it's a masterpiece. I mean, it's so shocking in the twists and turns and all that stuff. So I definitely rank it as one of the, if not the greatest slasher flick of all time. You and many other critics, because it's it's consistently like in the top three best horror movies. Even if you weren't weren't influenced by other, when newer people watch it, 
it has everything. Like, kind of like what Andrew's saying. It's the, the soundtrack, the theme, the atmosphere, the story, the acting. Like, they, they did well in each category to put that together. Yeah. That's why you could watch them and be like, man, okay, I can see how this would freak people out. Yeah, and it one of the so- greatest twists of all time. Yeah, I yeah. loved the twist. And when you yeah. when I saw that as a kid, I was like, this isn't computing. Wait, what? Wait, I, <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm sure that 1960s America felt the same way. They'd yeah. never seen anything. They'd never been exposed to anything like that. It, it's like, um, you know, it would be great to, like, go back into the 60s and just see all the things that they have and be in context and walk in with a, with a, with an audience yeah. who'd never yeah. seen anything like that and just sit through it and be like, listen to them, hear them. You can, you can just, it's palpable. Yeah. And, and. Again, the great thing about the original Psycho is a lot of it is implied. Later, when they did a remake with, uh, oh, what's his name? That was in uh, Wedding Crashers. Oh, ben, and Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. They, like, explicitly showed things in that remake, and it's like, that's, yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> now, I'm glad you use a hand gesture there. Um, but yeah. I think maybe, you know, in part due to the Hayes Code or whatever, but I, I like when filmmakers use some restraint and let the audience draw conclusions yes. than just explicitly showing yeah. them. I don't know what you're talking them. about. I have, there was Psycho. I don't, what, what remake are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. no. What's that? I don't I, know. I, oh, you're not, <laughs> you don't acknowledge Nick, Nick's it. being Nick. Um, <laughs> I acknowledge it. But no, I, Andrew's crossing it off his yeah, list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I did not see the remake. I'm not going to watch it. But yeah. uh, I agree with you, Joe. And I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of horror. Um, but my least favorite type of horror is the graphic like body horror. You oh, know? sure. And yeah. no, I agree. Just ultra gore yeah, where it, you see entrails like, or gore for the squirting blood. For the sake of gore. Yeah. If it's a little bit to, to further the story, that's fine. But, and I think I, I, I'm the same way with like sexual situations. Like you don't need to show mm-hmm. all sorts of flesh you yeah, know, yeah. For, for 15 minutes. But the implication, like everybody who's watching it knows what, you're going to do and it's i think it's more tasteful for both the violence and the sex if you don't have to show everything yeah that's just me yeah yeah i miss the uh, the movies like in the maybe Laughing. 40s or 50s where you know a couple comes together they turn out the light and then they show like a train going into a tunnel <laughs> like everything's implied <laughs> you know you don't have to see it it's all implied you know i i think movies were rocket better. coming out of a Are silo <laughs> <laughs> You see a bee going towards a flower, <laughs> exactly. or 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 a plumber like caulking the corner of a of a room. Okay, Weird guys, montage. Okay, guys, this is <laughs> what a strange montage in this. No, but 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 the pro- what I like to just dovetail into what uh, Andrew was saying. If you're watching something where people are naked or where there's gore. I, I, I immediately then step out of it and go, oh, that must have been really weird for the actress or the actor to, to be naked. It takes you out. It takes me out. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I don't. I, I don't. see that. I, and I suddenly go, I wonder if they got paid extra for that. I wonder if she, I wonder if those were really her boobs, you know, because yeah, sometimes yeah. they'll show for different. <laughs> or in a flash, in a slasher flick, it's like, that's not very, that's not really blood. Blood doesn't do that. It doesn't yeah. goop down like Hershey's syrup. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Oh, I was yeah, going to yeah. ask you guys a trivia question. In the cycle yes. shower scene as blood is swirling down the drain you just mentioned it it was chocolate syrup it wasn't because blood. because in black and white film you yeah, had to would, use different colors to show it up it wouldn't show up if it was yeah, yeah. but going thing, to what yeah. andrew said there was a trailer that this came out one of the best hollywood and i say this with all sarcasm intended nosferatu coming out on christmas yes <laughs> no and it's not a comedy it's actual horror yes and in the trailer the, the, the just the second trailer they released you see uh what's what's her name uh johnny depp's daughter rose uh, yeah something like that yeah mm. Lil, lily rose yeah lily rose yeah, like yeah. I, so how they cut the trailers together she has because she's possessed or like enthralled with with, with with the vampire she's having like an like an orgasmic experience that's in the trailer i'm going like what why is that so now i know yeah. that's coming so i'm like why is that there yeah i hate trailers yeah. i hate yeah. trailers i hate trailers much. i hate trailers I hate them i like a 30 second teaser and that's yeah. it yeah, yeah yeah but even in that trailer like just i know to get me excited but, but not, i know that's coming because they did yeah. that in bram stoker's uh copeless uh with yeah. gary oldman as dracula they oh, had those awesome. really explicit scenes in there and i was like the one time that I'm like, you cast Monica Bellucci and you showed it for five minutes. Francis, you piece of... But, you know, that, that was like one of those things. Like, she's a whore of the devil now. I'm like, oh, all right. And he starts like dry humping. Like, one of the, they're like, get away from me, you crazy old man. Now, you know where I thought you were going with this when you mentioned Nosferatu coming out on Christmas? I remember probably in the late 90s, uh, my sister and I, uh, we had some time to kill between like 
breakfast with one family and Christmas dinner with another family. So we would go see a movie. We, there was a period of time. And I'll never forget standing in line to, I think we were going to see the movie Dream Girls. And there was a family in front of us, like young kids and a mom. And uh, I overhear them say, you know, four tickets to Black Christmas, which was, I don't know if it was a remake, I guess, of the Bob Clark film. But um, on Christmas Day, they yes. were going to see a slasher flick. And I'm, I wanted to yell out, what is wrong? You're taking your children I, on I, Christmas Day to see a slasher flick. Okay, I'm going to defend that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Was it you? Here it goes. Yeah, it was I. It was, uh, <laughs> Uh, what, what he brought I his think, two-year-old daughter. Well, I took you, sat her on my lap, gave her some pop. No, the problem with Christmas is it gets too syrupy. It gets too family-y. It gets too religious-y, in my opinion. And suddenly, it's just like you're riding on the sugar high, and it's like, Someone has to stab me. Wait a minute. I'm going to go see, you know, something bad has to happen. Something like counter programming. I don't know what yeah. it is, but like, and that's why the nightmare before Christmas is so cool. Is it a opinion. horror element? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. But, yeah. It, but no, that's, that's but that's a fun anime. There's some, yeah, yeah. but I, I could see that. But that's, that's what I, 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 whenever you said that about the dream girls thing and the, the family, I think of Dana Carvey's church lady. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? That's so you special. saw Black Christmas on Christmas Day. Well, she's, the, she, she's, the, she's selling the tickets. Nice. Like, yeah. Four for Black Christmas. Are you sure? <laughs> All right. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> if you rearrange the letters in Santa, what does that spell? <laughs> Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't All know. Right. Satan. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the golden age of yes, slasher yes, flicks. Yes, yes. So we talked about how movies like The Town That Dreaded Sundown and Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of kicked things off in the mid-70s. Um, for me, kind of the gold standard of slasher flicks was Halloween, mm -hmm. uh, 1978, yeah. written and directed by John Carpenter. Uh, low, low budget. Uh, $300,000 budget earned $70 million. Cool. Uh, again, beloved by critics and audiences on uh, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, her career just skyrocketed after that. Donald Pleasance, uh, PJ Souls, and uh, Tony Moran uh, was the Michael Myers in the first one. And um, again, you know, a low budget horror film, there's just, it adds to the allure of slasher flicks when it's shot so so cheaply and handheld and from the perspective of the killer. But it looks more like a documentary. Exactly. It doesn't it look it like it's all feel. contrived. It looks like, oh, crap, yeah. somebody just, we just stumbled upon this, and it's happening in front of our eyes, and oh, my gosh, look what happened. You know, that kind of a yeah. thing. Rather than, like, contrived and everybody comes in wearing, you know, perfect. Um, and then I might also say I fell in love with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis at, oh, a very, yeah. at a very young age. I just want to let you know. That. So right off the bat. That's, that's one of those things where my brother was telling me about this movie, and I saw it later, and then. Like he he's only murdering the people in his family. I'm like, oh, okay, great. All right, so everyone in that house is going to die. Leave the man alone. <laughs> Just leave him alone. Like, my, are you my family? No, I am not, Michael. <laughs> That's not necessarily <laughs> true, though, because there's a babysitter. Yeah, there's across a babysitter. The street. There's a boyfriend. He got involved. Stay right. the hell away from that family. <laughs> let them let him do his business. Then lock him up or click click. No one with a gun. First of all, and that's another thing about slash movies. When you have the gun, it's a distance weapon. It's a range weapon. You don't have to get up close to shoot them. <laughs> or you don't have to wait for them to get up close yes. to you to take it away or yeah. to pass it. Exactly. <laughs> That's another thing. Now, one of, one of my regrets, and I, I'm hopefully going to get another chance to do this, but a few years ago I was in L.A., and one of the film locations that I wanted to visit was uh, Pee Wee's house from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Mm. So I went to the house, met the person who was staying there, got some pictures. It was really cool. Then I fly home only to find out later that had I walked up the street, a block was the entire Halloween neighborhood, the original homes and all that stuff no. on Halloween. And I'm like, oh, oh. why didn't I know that? So it's all in Pasadena. You can visit all the houses that were featured in Halloween. So I need to get out there. I think we uh, need a, I think we need year. some kind of a road trip. A road trip. No, <laughs> what I was thinking is some kind of a of a. Something where people donate. What's it called? <laughs> GoFundMe. Uh, GoFundMe. Uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> GoFundMe for there you Joe. Go. Four that's podcasters right. go on a road trip across America. <laughs> In a world where go. four podcasters yes. go Stop across us. America. And to go hunt for horror things. <laughs> and they, and and they, they found it. They film it along the way. They pitch up, pick up a hitchhiker <laughs> who just escaped from prison and has a drill <laughs> bit. Yeah. yeah. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> and the right. one non white guy's going to be like, hey, there's the dark cave. Don't worry, guys. I got this. I'll go down there. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we're doing some rabbit holes tonight. Yeah. But yeah, so Halloween was, like I said, the gold standard, had all the elements. And uh, Michael Myers, you know, even though they established him at the beginning of the film as a human being, eventually throughout the series, he took on sort of a supernatural feel where, you know, he, he gets killed, he falls off the balcony, but yeah. when they look over the, the balcony, he's gone. Like, right, okay, it, that, okay. So, yeah. that's so we're not talking about like Jason and, and, and Freddy, who actually then. W- they started. They do become. They became supernatural. full supernatural. Right, right. Yeah. But they to bring him back. He they had to have some sort of powerful, I don't know, ability to survive all the gunshots and everything. So, um, also here's another trivia question. You guys probably know this. Uh, what famous ass uh, a- actor's mask was uh, used as Michael Myers' mask? Ding ding ding. <laughs> Either one. William. That famous ass actor, Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I guess he was kind of upset about that. Like he felt like he should be getting some residuals from all the Mike Myers masks that were sold after that movie came but, out. But how bad is the, the guy who molded that? That nobody could really tell that that was William Shatner. Well, here's the thing. Could you really? I yeah, looked at that mask. So I look at it now and I think that is William Shatner. I it's can't. No, here's here's the deal. So the original mask that you were able to buy in stores at the time did resemble William Shatner. It was flesh colored and had his hair. Um, what they did is they they went to into a store, found it, cut out the eye holes to make it bigger, painted the whole thing white, and kind of changed the appearance a little bit. But when you look at that original mask, if you squint, it's like, yeah, that kind of looks like William Shatner. So so they altered give, it a little I'll bit. I'll give it to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's just an interesting little tidbit about that particular movie. So yes. Um. So yeah. In my opinion, uh, one of the, if not the greatest uh, slasher flick. I love ever in, made. I love in Point Break how the four. Uh, oh right. They're the dead presidents, and they all have the dead presidents. I'm like, you guys ripped that off from from Halloween, right? Isn't it the dead oh. president? No, you know what I thought you were gonna say. There was a movie, and I can't think of which movie it is right now, but they. They were going to rob a bank, and they told everyone to wear a Mike Myers ba- mask. Baby driver. I, baby, baby driver? Is I, that was what it just, was? I was just going to bring that wait, up. Wait, wait, wait. What, what so was they it? said, they said, all right, everyone get a Mike, Michael Myers mask oh, for the that, bank robbery, and one guy shows up with Austin Powers, which is hysterical. <laughs> I think that's Yeah, Jamie Foxx is like, no, I told you Mike Myers from the horror movie. Yeah. Have you seen it? Baby Dragon? Yeah, that is yeah, so yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad Excellent. you're able to recall that's that. Great that's movie. a great that's idea. Anyway, That's funny. All right, number two on my list. Again, uh, got such an influential movie, and I saw it in the theater. And when it was on cable, you know, we watched it over and over and over on cable. Uh, 1980, Friday the 13th. Um, now, the interesting thing, and again, I, I hope I don't have to say spoiler alert, but the interesting thing is that uh, Jason is not represented in the first Friday the 13th until the very, very end. But the killer is revealed in the film to be Jason's mom, oh, yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Voorhees, uh, portrayed by Betsy Palmer. Uh, so that's really interesting that, you know, you associate Jason with the Friday the 13th movies, but he was not the killer in the first one. And that makes you question everything because this actress, this woman, would she have had the physical strength to do the things she did in this movie. Like, like there's a scene, this is one of uh, Kevin Bacon's earliest roles was Friday the 13th. And there's a scene where he's laying on a cot and then a hand comes up and like holds down his forehead. And then something comes out through his throat, a sword or something like that. And you think, all right, a woman who looks like she's probably nearing 50, is she going to be able to hold down Kevin Bacon and plunge something through the cot, through the neck? Uh, yeah, it's you know there is psycho strength. Now I would have a problem where you see a young Arnold going there. I will protect you, and they go in there, and then she you find him dead, and they're like at the end you're like you did that, you killed Arnold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, she earned it. I don't know. It was it was an interesting twist, but uh, then of course you know the s- success of the movie again it earned sixty million on a five hundred fifty thousand dollar budget. Um, it just gave birth to sequel after sequel. I don't know how many they've done. At least ten, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because there's the Freddy versus Jason and all that now, stuff. That here's came the out. thing: are slash movies that popular because that's how young y- teenagers hook up? Like you get her scared. Oh Not yeah! Not to get all med- medical on you, but the parasympathetic nervous She's system is where you get arm. excited and arousal. So, yeah. 
Is that no, I, that's, I think that's part of it. You go to the, you know, back then you'd go to the drive-in and you'd be in the car and jump scares. That was That's what it was all about being a teenager. Bob, have you noticed that our movies really rank well from the 14 to 28? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Now, speaking of sequels, the next movie on my list, I actually, I think I prefer the sequel to Friday the 13th, part two, which came out in 1981. I actually prefer this one over the first one, even though I give props to the first one because, right. you know, it was a pioneer in that genre. Uh, but in the second one, now we get Jason. He's wearing a pillowcase over his head. He, they didn't introduce the hockey mask until part three, which was in 3D. And I saw that in the theater and it gave me a headache. Um, but I actually enjoyed part two better, uh, than part one. Uh, it didn't earn the money that the first one did 21 million, uh, on a million dollar budget. And it has very low ratings on Rotten Tomatoes, which kind of surprises me. But, um, I, I don't know. That was a, a great one, two punch in the franchise uh, Friday the 13th, part one and part two as a teenager, yeah. man, I ate that stuff up. What do you guys, uh, remember about the Friday the 13th movies? I remember the first one when I found out it was the mom. I went, "Oh." <laughs> the second one, I had almost a similar reaction. Like she did this. Oh, that feels kind of weak now. I, I have less respect for the victims. But for, <laughs> for, 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 for the, <laughs> yeah, Nick, let this lady do this. Nick, yeah, Nick. Nick is a well-known uh, victim blamer. <laughs> so I, I will. I will. I'm like, I'm like. It, it's it, no, it's like it's like the airport airport thing. When I don't get searched, and a little old uh, lady behind me gets searched, and like, I'm like, if she takes over the plane, she's earned it. We all deserve <laughs> That's it. That's right. Props to you. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm taking it over with my knitting needles. I'm like, all right, <laughs> guys, we're done. Andrew, no. what are, what's your thoughts of Friday the Thirteenth? So it's one of those movies that I have seen, yeah. but only a couple months ago for the first time, honestly. And wow. I just like Psycho, I did not know the twist. Yeah, I I'm I consider myself really lucky, and I know how to avoid. Uh, spoilers for movies. I envy you so much. And uh, I I watched the first three with like within I think five five nights, and I really liked them. Yeah, yeah, like not a whole lot of story to it. Yeah, but there's a, just a certain but mood, I guess, and, and, and jump scares. And I was in I was really in the mood for watching like some some good 1980s classic 1980s films. So I, I put all three of those on. I'm like. I, I really like this. I don't know if the other 10 are, are as good <laughs> or not. But, I kind of gave up after three. Right, right. But I liked them. They were right on my alley, yeah. Yeah, I imagine in the 70s and early 80s, a lot of these movies were the result of these effects guys like Tom Savini and these guys who were trying to come up with creative ways to kill people. And so in their mind, they're like, okay, how can we pull this off? How do we have a machete come down in somebody's head, make it look realistic? And I could imagine these guys all challenging each other to come up with these practical effects because, you know, digital effects were still decades away. And that's, I think, what gave birth to a lot of these movies were just these effects guys going, oh, you know, it'd be cool if, if we were to do this, if we were to do that. So I think that played a big role in it. George, what are your memories of Friday the 13th? I'll, I'll make it short and sweet. I thought they were boring. Really? Really? I Just saw them. Of the repetitive I loved, nature. I loved Halloween. That broke uh that broke it open for me. I thought that was super cool. And Friday the thirteenth, it was just a bunch of, you know, horny kids running around and I didn't think it was all that great. And I it reminds me of like a nineteen thirties musical where there's a lot of song and there's not a it's thin on story. Mm. It's just a lot of running around and oh no yeah. and what happens here? And I just I didn't think it was all that great. Huh. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, I was a horny teen watching these horny teens. <laughs> and that brings up a little footnote here. This is a weird little tidbit. So uh, after uh, Friday the 13th Part 2, I had been out of the theaters. And I remember uh, reading that uh, TV20. You guys remember TV20? Yeah. WXON, oh, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. They, they were like, we're going to show Friday the 13th Part 2 unedited, uncensored. And I was like, wait a second. Aren't there... I, it's full frontal nudity yeah. in Friday the 13th Part 2. So I'm like, okay, this can't possibly be accurate. When was it running? What time? Uh, it was like 8 o'clock. Whoa. 9 o'clock, yeah. So I remember, imagine me being a teenager. I'm probably about 15 at this point. And so I'm watching Friday the 13th Part 2. I don't think anyone else was at home. It would have been embarrassing to have my mom sitting there next to me. <laughs> and they get to the scene where this beautiful actress is going to skinny dip. She stripped naked, full frontal nudity on TV 20. My jaw hung open. I'm like, 
this is new. I had never seen that on broadcast television before. <laughs> Shocked the heck out of me. It's walking. You go, mother, <laughs> look at this filth on TV. I was documenting it so I could report this. So thing. glad you just walked yeah. in <laughs> so you could see this with me. Yeah. You just turned into the wave. I'm as outraged as you are, mother. <laughs> that reminds me of a time when I was sitting at home on the couch by myself. I think my mom was sleeping or something, and Airplane was on. And there's one topless scene in Airplane that lasts about three seconds. Oh, it's so and funny. And just as that scene's ready to come up, the door opens up. My mom walks in. Here are these enormous breasts. on, And she's like, what are you watching? I'm like, come on. You had to walk mothers in on have that a sense. part. They, mothers have a sense of when to walk in. She yeah. was outside your door. She knows exactly what scene. Mm. There it is. Now she walks in. <laughs> there it is. Waiting for the cue, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I enjoyed the Friday the 13th movies, but I agree with you. There's no story, but it's all just. You know, jump scares and titillation. And thank God they had like, the teenager. proper bag. Could you imagine, like, the first, you know, you see the cops find the first psycho and he's dead on the floor because he had a p- plastic bag on him. Like, <laughs> didn't realize how these things worked. It's like, ah! He asphyxiated himself. It's like, that's why you use cloth, Bob. <laughs> but, I, but I do like I do like there to be a storyline. I oh, do I like agree. there to be yeah. a reasoning behind that. Yeah. And, and um, it, it, that seems to capture the imagination. And the other thing that's so horrible, which you guys are going to laugh for me even saying this, but... Why are the women in these movies so incredibly stupid and so incredibly? <laughs> they're all yeah, they were also. I mean, everybody was stupid, but the women were the ones who watched while people got murdered or yeah. stood aside, and then finally, oh, is, <laughs> is it my turn to be murdered? <laughs> yeah, so. or, 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 the, or the boyfriend, go check it out. I will. I'll go check yeah. it out in the fog. There's a noise. There it is. Go Uh-oh. see what the noise is. Yeah. And, and this is where we're all going to get a bunch of emails, or maybe I will. You know. When all the virgins are demonstrably attractive, I'm like, you're a virgin for real? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> because I mean, like, it's Hollywood, man. Because you know, yeah, it's, it's like Nick's Nixon. You know, with a young me is like, yeah, look, there's a virgin. Yeah, we believe that. <laughs> yeah, we can we can see them. Like, come on, guys. That reminds me of a, a Arlo and Janice comic strip where Arlo and Janice are sitting on the sofa watching TV, and the wife Janice elbows Arlo and points at the TV and says, "Do you find that woman attractive?" And he goes, of course I do. It's Hollywood. It's TV. He goes, Hollywood's idea of a, a, a unattractive woman is a beautiful woman wearing glasses. Yeah. And I <laughs> love that line. Ah, yeah. I that love was, that line. Remember Last Action Hero, which, uh, which came out, unfortunately, right when Independence Day was Arnold's movie, <laughs> where the kid can go into the movie, like he has the magic ticket that goes into like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. He's like, there are no unattractive women here. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course, it's California. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, where are the normal looking women? All like those uh, '80s sex romp movies, you know. There's always the guy who was going after the pretty blonde, but the brunette who was his friend, he would ignore, and then she'd take her glasses <laughs> off, and oh, my and her hair comes down, and you're like, oh, she shakes her head in slow motion. Didn't they make a movie where that is the whole basis of the movie? Was it She's All That yeah. with Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah. and uh, I forgot the girl's <laughs> name. She, I think that was the only movie she was in, but like that's the whole basis of the movie. She starts off with glasses. <laughs> takes him off, and Freddie Prince Jr. is like, whoa, <laughs> and scene. That was- yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a classic Hollywood trope. Uh, next up on my list, uh, another movie that uh, you know kind of followed in the wake of these slasher flicks that came before him, but took it to a whole new level and uh, introduced the whole supernatural uh, aspect. We're talking about Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. 1984, came out the year I graduated high school. Huge phenomenon, just something unlike anything we've seen in these types of movies before it. Of course, you know, cemented Wes Craven is a horror god, written and directed by uh, Wes, uh, starring Heather Langenkamp, Johnny Depp in an early, early role, and uh, Robert Englund, who's going to be here in Detroit in a couple of weeks in November. He's coming to the Motor City Comic Con. Interview. Um, Interview. I'd like to try and get one. Yes. Um, so yeah, so he, he, you know, uh, immortalized Freddy Krueger, uh, it earned 57 million on a $1 million budget. Uh, again, highly ranked on Rotten Tomatoes, 95 and 84 from critics and audience. Now, a lot of people pan the second one. It had some strange subtext to it that rubbed people the wrong way, but then, uh, it kind of rebounded with Nightmare 3 Dream Warriors in 1987, which I really, really enjoyed. I thought it almost improved on the first one um but of course it cemented you know uh freddy krueger's the wise cracking visual gag i'm your boyfriend now and a tongue comes out of you know all that stuff <laughs> that was kind of cemented and almost made him a comedic uh kind of a 
uh, character. Um, Heather Langenkamp returned as Nancy Thompson. Uh, Robert Englund was uh, back as Freddy uh, and earned about $45 million on a $4 million budget, so they upped the budget. Um, That's a good ROI, huh, George? Yeah. It is. I, I would, yes, absolutely invest in that. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because that's like in the 80s movie where Phoebe Cates is the frumpy looking one. Like, Phoebe Cates is frumpy. <laughs> this is this is who we're going to sit on attractive in a, in a horror movie. Fine. You're right. Is, is the director blind? Yeah. <laughs> but she's, she's so plain compared to her. I'm like, right. I, I, I've only seen the first uh, Freddy movie, but I really liked it. And it oh, was yeah. another one that I watched it for the first time, I don't know, probably three years ago. When, you know, during COVID and I was, you know, just watching more movies at home than normal. But no, I I really liked it. And like you said, the the practical effects were really cool, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked the scene where his arms are like really stretched out far. Yeah. They did some really cool visual because they they had that canvas of being in a dream where they were able to kind of let their imagination run wild and do some really wild and crazy stuff. And see, that's the that's one element like where. I, I'm I kind of like I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum with George on this. Where if you're mo- the more realistic you are, that means you just didn't have a good gun on you in America. <laughs> Whereas if it's the supernatural aspect, you got to think on your feet because the laws of physics don't apply anymore. Like yeah, I can't exactly. use rationale. No, like, wait a minute. I really liked this movie. I liked it for a number of reasons. Number mm-hmm. one, I like what they, the, the, what ha- like the the origin story of Freddy. Right. The the, the the fact that he was in jail, and, or the woman was in, the the nun was in jail, and she was left there overnight, and she was raped by a thousand inmates, and then oh. they, she had a child. Yeah. that scared me as a kid. I thought yeah. that was cool. The backstory, terrible. the backstory, yeah, is terrible. But I thought that Michael Myers, and I thought that Jason or whoever, they had so little charisma compared to Freddy, oh, and yeah. I loved Freddy. Yeah, yeah. And you um, ch- I was I'm in the movie theater. I was in the movie. Theater, watching this on VHS for the first time, and there's the girl who starts to like freak out, and then she pops up on the ceiling, and she's like bleeding everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm with some friends that are girls, and she goes, "God, I hate when that happens." She goes, "Are your periods <laughs> that bad?" Too? Oh, 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 oh. And we all started laughing. That's it was the something. Birth along of it. Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Exactly, yeah, it was those so comments. funny. But I do remember. I always thought that there was a. I liked the humor because yeah. the fact that. Halloween was so serious, and some of these, it's like I, I can't continue to keep serious. You got to make a little bit of fun of yourself, yeah. and I love that about that. And I love the backstory, and there were some cool things, and the dream sequence yes. made it even better. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't fall asleep and all that. Yeah. No, I remember you know during that period when my friends and I would go see these movies in uh, in the theaters in the eighties. Uh, there became this thing where like audience members would yell lines out and get like a, a big laugh. And that became part of the experience. It was almost like, you know, Rocky horror oh, picture yeah, show or picture something. Show. And it was a lot of fun. Um, now we're going to do something we've never done before on this podcast. George, put your headphones on oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, two years ago, I got to interview Heather Langenkin who played what? Nancy in what? nightmare. And the devil what? you say. Talk about what these movies, the impact they've had on you, your life, your career. Well, I certainly realize that I've played like one of the greatest roles of all time in the horror genre, and I really appreciate that part of being Nancy. And uh, people tell me all the time how important she was to their growing up or, you know, parts of their life that might have been difficult where they looked at Nancy as a, as a way through their difficulties. So that's definitely the most uh, touching part of hearing folk stories about their relationship with Nancy. Yeah, because she's, she's not just a victim, she's a strong character. She kind of kicks some Freddy butt, right? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody inside of them has a little bit of Nancy if they look for it. You know, they, uh, they can watch her and see how she manages all these, you know, incredible problems with her life. And, and I do find that people use her. And, and uh, I have used her from time to time in my life, so I know that it's possible to do that. Awesome. Last question: What does the term "scream queen" mean to you? It's it seems a little bit of a misnomer, but you're you're in fantastic company with actresses who've kind of fallen into that scream queen category. Yeah, I mean, I look at it both ways. If you're screaming at the movie, then uh, you know I'm part of that. You know, I I do do some good screams in the show, so I I am very proud of that. And um, it's a term that. I had to learn to love, but I do love it now. Yeah. So that was at uh, Astronomicon just last year, 2023. Uh, of course, she was in the first one. She returned for the uh, Dream Warriors number three, 
and then came back later for Wes Craven's A New Nightmare in 1994. Uh, and she joined the uh, pantheon, is that the right pronunciation, that word, of the screen mm-hmm. queens that include yes. Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, Adrian Barbeau and uh, Janet Lee and people like that. It's and, like hosting Saturday Night Live. you got to do it a few times before you get <laughs> on to like, Mount uh, Rushmore. Yeah, then you get that Mount Rushmore. Yeah, you get your jacket. Is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have it, any of you guys seen that New Nightmare? No, I no, haven't seen I haven't New Nightmare, yet. yeah. Because I remember when I was a kid, it came out. I, I was must have been 10 when it came out. And I remember people talking about, oh, yeah, Freddy's back. And I remember from the popular, you know, pop culture about Nightmare on Elm Street. But um, I never saw it. I never heard if it was good or not. So I was just curious. If anybody yeah, saw it. I might have to revisit that as I'm watching yeah. Uh, yeah. horror movies this October. I might want to check that out. Um. All right, so... The Nightmare movies brought something new to the table. Uh, speaking of bringing something new to the table, like I said, you know, after a hundred movies came out over a ten-year period, uh, people sort of got burnt out on on uh, slasher flicks until this movie poked fun at it, revived it, and it was a lot of fun and mixed humor and horror and all that stuff. And I think that's a really successful recipe is when you mix humor and horror like you know Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein if yeah. you're scaring people and making them laugh at the same time that just is a, a really uh, effective recipe uh so Scream 1996 directed again by Wes Craven who did the Nightmare movies uh written by Kevin Williamson uh starring Nev Campbell Courtney Cox David Arquette uh, Skeet Ulrich, Matt Lillard, Jamie Kennedy, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Uh, earned $173 million at the box office on a $15 million budget. Uh, 81%, 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, this movie was so much fun to have the characters on screen, almost breaking the fourth wall, yeah. like saying, okay, these are the things that happen in a movie. You know, Don't say, I'll be right back. And then the character leaves and goes, I'll be right back. It's poking fun at all the tropes and the elements that a slasher flick needs to have, and they were all contained in this flick. It had the interesting twist, and it might have been one of the first movies to do this, where you find out it's not just one guy. It might be two guys. And it was it was such a blast. It was so much fun. Uh, what do you guys remember, Nick, uh, about seeing Scream for the first time? I, I remember it touched off a craze of that ghost face mask. And the voice changer, where everyone started yeah. doing that nonsense. It came out in 1996. <laughs> I was a senior in high school. So that was the year, you know, you're like, okay, let's go ch- check this out. And Drew Barrymore, spoilers, she's on the cover of the movie and yeah, on the post still dies in the opening. They so took th- a page from, from Psycho. Hitch- yeah, from yeah. Hitchcock a little. Because yeah. you're yeah. like, there's no way you're going to kill Drew Barrymore. I'm like, oh, you did. Yeah. And she almost made it. Yeah, and it got it at the very end. Yeah, but I did, I did enjoy the the backstory because they they put some depth to the character, like why he was the killer. Yeah, and then he did have the crazy psycho friend, who just thought, "Hey, I'm doing this for shits and giggles." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was it was a fun movie. Andrew, your thoughts? I keep forgetting that Wes Craven did this movie. Yeah, I always he has a that. cameo in it too, where he's a janitor dressed like Freddy Krueger in the movie. <laughs> It's pretty cool. Now, see, this movie came out in 1996, so this is before there was the acknowledged gun craze in America because yeah. you try to pull some of that crap, now everybody's carrying a piece. <laughs> you don't bring a knife to a gunfight yeah, yeah. or to a murder mystery. <laughs> but did Dewey carry a gun? He was a cop. He yeah. should have had a gun <laughs> yeah. on him. It did him no good. Um, I <laughs> I watched this, must have been probably 13. It was probably the year after it came out, probably sometime in 97 or 98. Two of my friends from church, we, we had a sleepover at one of the guys' house. And it, so it was like kind of on in the background. So I honestly don't really remember it. So I'd have to watch it again. No, that's fine because that's, oh. that's one of those movies where, you know. I, I do need to. I, I mean, I remember liking it from what I saw, but yeah. I need to watch it again. Yeah. It, but I liked it because, like you said, it poked fun at some of the, the tropes. Yeah, yeah. And they, I like I, I like it when they, they try to, like, okay, let's see how we – don't do the most. They're like, I'm just going to go running and trip and fall down. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> Get up. Yep. Don't fall down. George, your memories of Scream? Yeah, loved it. Good good stuff. <laughs> That's it. I, I do – I've seen it uh, I've seen it a few times, and I think it's fantastic. You've already said everything. I, I think it's great. You know, it's weird. I, I have this weird uh, universe connection to Scream, and it's not something I plan. It's just something that happened. But I know this story. Yeah, so way back <laughs> in 1990, I was at on Venice Beach with some friends, oh. and a limo pulled up, and uh, 
group of teenagers stepped out of limo, and one of them was Drew Barrymore. And I had the guts to go up and say, hey, Drew, my buddy's got a camera. Can I get a picture with you? So I got a picture with Drew Barrymore uh, at Venice Beach. Now, this is years before Scream. And then over the course of the year since Scream, I, uh, I met Henry Winkler, who has a kind of an uncredited the role fun. in Scream as oh, the teacher, the teacher yeah. who gets like the... murdered in the classroom, right? Like something yeah. like that. Uh, so I met he- uh, Henry Winkler. And then I went to a comedy club and I met Jamie Kennedy, who was hanging out and got a picture with Jamie Kennedy. And then, of course, uh, the the other two uh, main actors in it, they, they show up at Motor City Comic Con. So you got Skeet Ulrich and uh, Matthew Lillard show up at these cons. No, no, no. What you're telling us is that you're a stalker. No, I, it was not planned, but I also met. What's it like having people come up and tell you how much your work means to them? It's pretty amazing. I think as a screen actor, you don't get that immediate response from an audience like you do when you're on stage. For So for us to, to come out and meet the fans and hear their opinions and see how we have some kind of an impact is, is really lovely. Speaking of impact, let's talk about the Scream franchise, what it did for the horror genre, and what it meant to you in your career. Everything. Um, for the horror genre, they, you know, it's it said that it brought the genre back. I think there had been a big lull in horror films, and we were lucky that we hit at the right time and made a good movie, and Kevin Williamson and Wes Craven as a combo were just incredibly bright with what they did with the film, with sort of making a horror film with a wink at the horror film genre at the same time was very intelligent um so that was exciting and for me you know it was my first lead in a movie and it did really well so i was lucky it looked fun it was a lot of fun we had a blast on these movies so of course that was the lovely nev campbell at oh, motor city comic con so, so i could not her. i was so, so hot. in love she, so hot. So hot. So hot. when i found out that she agreed to do an interview with me i was like what now huh what i i had such a huge crush on her i still as, do I as still did love i her. as do i and she's been in every scream film except for six which was the last one but she is now returning for scream seven so yeah. that should be interesting that'd it's, be like uh, Oh, and what's and, and let me ask you a question, Joe. What's it like working at Variety Magazine? <laughs> uh, it's, it's great, but let's focus on you, Nev. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, she was very lovely, very sweet, and uh, it's so cool to see her return to the Scream uh, franchise. I, I, I didn't know they were doing Scream 7. Yeah. No, no I really got to see Scream 6. 25, I th- yeah. think, or is it 26? It's, it's, it, there is a Scream 7. Uh, the Scream, Scream 7 6 is the one with Jenna Ortega in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was the last so. one. There was a, a salary dispute, so Nev opted out, but they're like, okay, we need to do these with Nev. Yeah. So I would imagine it's like Elvis. Like whenever Elvis needed money, he would do a film and a, <laughs> uh, a album, and, and he would buy everyone Cadillacs. Nev, hey, you need some cash? Let's do a Scream movie, man. It, she's cranking these out. Um, but it was such a huge thrill to meet her and talk about Scream and been a lot of fun. So Scream 7 comes out February of 26. 26. So, yeah. And, so and Kevin Williamson is coming back to direct. Wow. All right. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I, you know, I did revisit uh, Scream 2 not too long ago. Maybe it was last Halloween. And it, you know, the opera stuff. I don't know why I got into the yeah. opera stuff. It got It was a little bit much for me. I. I'm not a big fan of all the sequels, but I do really love the first one. I think it's a classic and one of my all-time favorite films ever. Didn't they film Scream 4 around around here? Somewhere in Michigan, yeah, yeah. They came to Michigan to film one of the sequels, yeah. Back when we had the tax credits. Yeah. But yeah. right when Scream came out, that's when they also started doing stuff like, I know what you did last summer. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it spawns all, you know, something successful. Everyone jumps on it. And uh, until we get bored with it again, but, but I haven't until mentioned- the to the Wayne's yeah. brothers start making parodies, yeah, <laughs> which are great. Scary movie. I the love the first movie, two yeah. scary movies. Then Voila. they start to kind of fall off, but I love the first two, <laughs> especially the second one. They were just so outrageous in that one. They they they, they gave zero f's about about what was going on in that one. Yeah. Now my next movie, I'm curious to see your response for this because now I'm starting to sort of get away from the classic uh, slasher film uh, structure uh the next one on my list and and uh, you'll understand why i included it uh as i talk about it uh 2001's from yes. hell uh directed by albert hughes based on a graphic novel by alan moore stars johnny depp as the investigator um yes. I, I forget the and character's ian name. Home. uh yeah ian home uh, heather graham is in it robbie coltrane yep. 
And the, this is what's interesting. The story is based on one of several theories of who Jack the Ripper was. Yes. And this one decides to focus on the connection that some people think that British royalty had something to do with the whole Jack the Ripper thing, which is pretty outlandish and pretty unlikely, but it makes for a great story. And so any, you know, when you do a film based on Jack the Ripper, it has to kind of tick the boxes for a slasher film. And uh, from what I've read, the movie fairly accurately portrays each murder of the historic women that were murdered by Jack the Ripper, as far as the crime scene and how it happened and all that stuff. So it's, it mixes fantasy and uh, reality in this movie. But I, I remember seeing it in theaters when it came out and I really, really enjoyed it. Like I thought it was really well done. And you know, it's, it's, I guess it's fairly graphic because you're dealing with Jack the Ripper, but I, I don't remember, you know, being really repulsed by it. It was done in a very artistic way, I guess. So, uh, what's your what's your memory, Nick, of uh, uh, From Hell? I, I love it. I love the trailer. I went and saw it. I, I enjoyed. That was I was I was actually going to mention. This is what I like about this, folks. Whenever Joe creates a list that we have to do for the podcast, I don't really have to work that hard because I'm follow- I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. if I'm in Joe's, if there's film class, I'll be in Joe's study group and let Joe take the lead. <laughs> I'm sure there's just, a lot of crossover. And yeah. I just build yeah. off what Joe says because <laughs> I was like, I got to mention From Hell. Then Joe goes, I'm going to mention From Hell. Ding. I'm done. <laughs> so my assignment's done. I, I love this. And so, yeah, I just have to piggyback on it. No, From yeah. Hell was fantastic. I love the th- I love that they went with the, they hinted at the royal family. And Ian Holm did a fantastic job. I don't know how they did that stuff with his eyes. Yeah, they would go black. Yeah, yeah. like they get become like yeah, it's it's amazing. I thought Depp did a great job. Uh, I love, even though I get the ending, I wanted him to make it in the ending, but I get why he didn't, and it made that it actually made the movie better in hindsight. At which, the time, which was, character? Johnny Depp's character, the end, yeah. when he when he basically doesn't go to her because he knows he's being watched. Right, right. And he knows he can't ever go, so he just basically gets high and yeah. ODs, and they close the case, and they never find her. But it was a sacrifice he did at the end. Now, in real life, uh, Detective Aberline, I think was the character's name, he, he lived. Yeah. He didn't commit suicide by opium or whatever. That yeah. was a fictional element. But the fact that Heather Graham's character, uh, Mary uh, something, uh that was based on a rumor that after her supposed murder by Jack the Ripper, witnesses saw her around town. So yeah. the movie kind of borrows from that and implies that someone else got murdered and that she uh, continued to survive after that. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. Have you seen it? Yeah, so I watched it for – I'm trying to remember what episode it was. But We it did was, a Jack the Ripper yeah. episode, so, I yeah, think. It was for the Movies Jack the based on Jack the Ripper, and, yeah. And so I watched that for that, and that was the first time I saw it, and I loved it. I thought it was really well made. The wardrobe and costume, uh, yeah. cinematography, everything. It was yeah. it was well made. That's one of those movies where everything yeah. came together. I agree with Andrew on that one. And uh, Heather Graham with her big, beautiful... Uh, Red hair? Twe- Tweety Bird eyes. <laughs> uh, she was great. Yeah. Great save. And I love the little, <laughs> the little details, too. Like, in real life, near one of the crime scenes, they found a grape stem. Yes. And yeah, they incorporated yeah, yeah. that in the movie to yeah. imply that at the time in the Whitechapel area there, grapes were like a delicacy that can only be afforded by the elite. So to find these grape stems near one of the crime scenes implied that somebody of some wealth had something to do with or it. Or a politician, like Nick said earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whenever it's someone high profile, <laughs> we don't know who did it. Really. Yeah. A whole of Scotland Yard's resources. No yeah. one could figure out who did. Nobody and saw this nothing. this falls right into that. You're yeah. describing this movie. Yep. Yeah, yeah. George, did you ever see From I Hell? I didn't. I just added it to my list. There yeah. you go. It's, it's, it's really good. Good, good one, yeah. you know, gather family around. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's, there's yeah. no, like, overt sex or anything, right? It's just... Uh, it's, but it is a slasher film. It is. Yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, like I said, it checks all the boxes of a slasher flick. Yeah. Because it's Jack the Ripper going from victim to victim. They'll yeah. show some post-death scenes where you see the, the body split and they're like, Inspector, you don't want to see this. Like, yeah, you must yeah. inspect the body. And then you go, and then they they try not to make it. There's only one scene where I think at the end where they thought they got Mary. It, it was the yeah. French. It was the French prostitute. Okay. Okay. There. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. <laughs> All right. The next film on my list again stars a Johnny Depp, and this one is a little bit more 
fantastical, if that's a word, wait, than wait, the other one. Let ones. me try to guess this one. Yes. Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. Yes. Headless Horseman. I love that movie. Uh, Tim Burton. Such I haven't a... seen it. I heard it Real? stunk. No. 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 It's wow, I got a resounding no. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, on Rotten Tomatoes, critics gave it 70, audience gave it 80, so it was a pretty good numbers. And that oh, came out right. just, what, two or three years before From Hell, right? Uh, like Sleepy Hollow was 99, From Hell was 2001. Two, yeah. So yeah, two years apart. I feel, I feel like he and went. He plays a similar type uh, yeah, character. Like detective. He's I've a got, detective. I've got my yeah. homework right, right here, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah, so yeah, John, good. I, I would have never would have picked uh, Johnny Depp to play Ichabod Crane. I, I, yeah. I know uh, Jeff Goldblum played him in a low budget yeah. TV movie, and he was fantastic. But Johnny Depp did a really great Ichabod Crane, and uh, the backstory giving it a supernatural element. Like in the in the Disney animated Sleepy Hollow Headless Horseman short, they imply that Brom Bones w- had something to do uh, with the whole uh, Headless Horseman yeah. thing. In this movie, they don't even hint. It's like here's what's happening, here's what's going on, and the fun of it is un- unraveling this mystery of why the Headless Horseman is doing what and he's doing and who the Headless Horseman is. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was like, There's what no the Headless story, Horseman? Yeah. What's that? There's no truth to the story, is there? Well, I mean, if you were to go to Sleepy Hollow, New York, wherever that is, they'll probably try to convince you that the Headless Horseman roamed these uh, roads yeah. and protected mm-hmm. the covered bridge. But um, So there, there's roots. I'm sure they have celebrations and yeah. festivals in that area. George? That's that white person curiosity. Mm-hmm. Suppress it. That's like saying, <laughs> I'm going to go to Salem, Massachusetts, find out what's all over these witchcraft. And was, they're like, what, what a- brings you here from Detroit? I'm going to say I'll be right back. Yeah, no, don't do it. <laughs> don't, George. It, it's it's Tim Burton's most <laughs> R-rated movie. Yeah. It, it, oh. is, it is pretty violent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I do know that Tim Burton loves everything to have a beheading in it, so, you know. Oh, sure. And Christina Ricci's in that movie, and she has wonderful eyes. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Lovely in it. Uh, of course, Christopher Beautiful Walken eyes. is the Headless Horseman. And, um, yeah. gosh, there's... Uh, What's her name? Marie. What's uh? I think it might have been Tim Burton's wife at one time. How, Helena um, Bonham Carter. No, 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 no. The Mar- Marie. I have to look. Was it she up. married to him? She was in Mars Attacks, and she was in uh, some other things. Oh, but she was Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie. Yeah. Yeah. So she plays Ichabod's mother, and she's so stunning, so yeah. beautiful in that. And uh, yeah, she was one of the Mars. That, that was Lisa girls. Marie. Yeah, she was in Mars oh. Attacks as the alien curvaceous uh, girl and she's done some really quirky stuff and she actually sang for a while but uh yeah i, I really recommend sleepy hollow it's a really fun movie to watch this time of the year and uh yeah, yeah and it's highly it's recommend really great with a great story i mean that's probably the best thing about it is the story's fantastic I'm looking forward to it yeah, yeah if you ever yeah. want to do a back-to-back that's a good one from yeah. uh, like sleepy hollow and from hell and i you- agree i gotta save yeah. something for next year <laughs> yeah, <it's- laughs> not, not all at once not all at once <laughs> And now my final movie on my top ten list, and then we could go around the table with anything I left out. But, again, like I said, when you grow tired of a genre, you kind of wait for someone to do a fun twist on it, something different. And, like I said, adding humor to the genre always works well. And I remember sitting down and watching a movie that everyone recommended to me and absolutely loving it. It's called Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, <laughs> uh, 2010. Have you heard about this one, George? Yes. I have not. I've been on here as well. George is playing the Andrew yeah, role today. Uh, yeah. um, I, I have not seen it, but I was going through a list of horror movies to watch this time of year and at work when on my lunch break, and I I almost asked this dude I work with who we talk about movies all the time because he, like you guys, always makes fun of me for movies, all these <laughs> you po- haven't. popular movies I haven't seen, <laughs> but then he makes fun of me for having a, an encyclopedic uh, mind of, like in like you know out of the way indie movies. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, how do you know all this stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, wait, but, wait, 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 wait. Someone's making fun of you. No, no, no. Only no. You, uh, okay, okay. We'll stop that. <laughs> we'll just keep it con- contained to this room. But I heard it was good. It's awesome. Yeah, I was surprised at how much I love Tucker this and film. Tucker and Dale. Yeah. Tucker and Dale. It's versus a dark comedy. Evil. Uh, written and directed by Eli Craig, starring uh, Alan like Tudyk Shaun and Tyler Dead, Labine. Oh, Am I Tudyk is in it. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it was a kind of a box office dud. It broke even. A five million dollar budget. It only grossed five million dollars, but it has since become yeah. a, a cult classic, and uh, it's rated eighty five percent by both critics and audience on Rotten oh, Tomatoes. Oh, I didn't see it in theaters. My brother got me. And he's like, "You got to see this," and I, I watched it. It was hilarious. It, it was great. It was great. I. I, I <laughs> 
It's and not gotta, dirty humor. No, it's, no, no, not at all. It, it, you'll be laughing is it out loud. It, it's R for the gore. There's a, yeah, I mean, it's a slasher flick. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Or like, it's like but, cartoony gore. Yeah, kinda. yeah, exactly. Where, you know, these these two guys, and this won't spoil anything, yeah, yeah. but two guys, like, uh, they buy a cabin in <laughs> the woods, and they're like, we're going to fix this up. Two and regular guys. I feel our, so bad for Galloway. Alan Tudyk, and what's the other actor's name? Uh, I forgot his uh, name, but I've seen him. Tyler Levine, Tyler Le- L-A-B-I-N-E. Yeah, Alan Levine. Tudyk is great. Um, But they're, like, sorely misunderstood. A group of teenagers, they encounter a group of teenagers in the woods, and they think they're two, you know, slasher serial killers, and they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and it's hysterical. Hysterical. And it's they have really their own they have their own perceptions of the of the young teens that are out in the woods. <laughs> and it's great. Oh, I won't spoil anything. There's a wood chipper scene that I had had me in tears. Yeah. Okay. And it's, so it's a really great twist on All the right. slasher All genre. Right. And make sure that if you watch the movie, you watch some of the extras too, because there's an extra on the DVD that just stitches together the scenes that are observed by the the victims, the teenagers. And it makes these two guys look like serial killers. <laughs> and, but they're taken out of context, and it becomes like a true horror movie. When in reality, they're just two misunderstood, innocent souls. <laughs> they're just so <laughs> lovely. They're so like, Dale, why are they doing this? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I really strongly recommend this movie. Alan Tudyk with, with like a West, West Virginia accent is... Mwah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's Chef awesome. Kiss, yeah. So like I said, you know, it's always fun when you find something that yeah. gives you a, a twist you haven't seen before in a tired genre. So that's pretty much my top 10 plus a mm. couple of honorable mentions. Uh, what have we missed? Nick, is there anything that comes to mind uh, that we have not talked about? No, I am going to allocate my time to Andrew because we have covered my list <laughs> and then some and all the best parts. Yeah, you guys have a pretty good Venn diagram, a lot a lot of, a lot of episodes yeah, for, yeah. for the movies. Um, so... This movie is a slasher, but the but the the villain is also uh, a monster. I don't know; it, it wouldn't really uh, have any uh, supernatural. But Jeepers Creepers. Oh yes, have you seen that? I have. You didn't like at it? least the first third of it, and then I turned it off. I for some reason hated, hated, hated it. Oh, don't know. I so, can't explain. So, it. F- if I were to watch it now, I don't know. But I saw it in the theater at Great Lakes when it came out. I was huh. 16. So I, I think for a 16-year-old with a couple of his buddies, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I will rewatched it maybe a little bit before COVID, maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. And it just brought back all these good memories. Huh. And, and I, I don't know. There's something about it. The that, lady, the lady that, when she goes, jeepers, creepers, where do you get them peepers? It's marked you. Yeah, yeah. At the cop station. At the yeah, end. when and also in the cop station when the power goes out yeah. and it's moving around, that that freaked me out. But yeah, I, I, this, I did you see the second one with the high school uh, football team on the I bus? I did, but it suffered sequelitis. That's one of those yeah. things where it's not as good as the first one. But it, it wasn't bad, but not as good as the first one. I really wanted to like it. I think I watched it last year because I was just looking for oh, something so, I hadn't seen so recently. And okay. so you know, I knew of it, and I thought the the killer, you know, looked pretty cool and i sat down with it and i like i said i i don't know if i got a third of the way in and i stopped it now i did see someone post on facebook and this made me really laugh out loud they said okay real think about this when you watch jeepers creepers this supernatural killer not only registered his truck with the dmv but got <laughs> personalized plates yeah. which i thought was hysterical that was really funny that's, that's some of the campy stuff i want in there. to we- see that scene of him walking into the you know yeah. secretary of state's Oh, uh, yeah, can I get some personal plates? That's a lot. Um, have you seen it? I have not. No, nope, another yeah. one. I just added it to the list. So yeah. you're going to have to either go with me or go with him. But I, I. It hasn't been one of my favorite genres because it seems like the the level of gore in a lot of things. And I've just given up on the genre overall. But I mean, this, this is infusing some new ideas. But um, yeah, for me, uh, the gore has overtaken sometimes. And it's sometimes yeah. it's fun, like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, yeah, yeah. where these guys are really trying to be as gory as possible and have things. Those are cool, and I'm not. A, those aren't slasher movies. Those are just fun. In my opinion, they're fun because you've gone. I mean, you, you know, it looks camp. like it looks like you're, you know, like some kids in 
in med- medical school got crazy with some <laughs> cadavers or something, you know, like or whatever. But um, yeah, no, I, 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 I've, I, I do like movies that are a little bit more realistic, and I think I've been too hard on the genre. So I am gonna. Ch- and it sounds like the last four have all been fun. Sleepy Hollow and Jeepers from Creepers are, and From Hell. Fun. They're all just like fun. They're not heavy. We're going to try and scare yeah. you. There is an element of comedy, and I do think you need that comi- yeah, Jeepers, comical relief. Jeepers Creepers, um, there, are some, there are some comedic parts to it to kind of even it out. Um, I was just going to talk about one more. A uh, very new movie just came out a couple months ago, and uh, I, I, I'm sure I mentioned to you guys off, off, uh, off the mic. Um, Long Legs, directed Long by. Um, it did just Ant- come out. By is directed by Anthony Perkins' son. His name's o- His name's okay. Osgood Perkins. What do you know the premise? What's yeah. the premise? Osgood, oh, what a cool name. Yeah, Osgood. He goes by Oz. Oz Perkins. So it's Nicolas Cage with only about six minutes of screen time. Huh. He plays a kill a serial killer. Um, Long legs. And it takes place like in the mid to early nineties. Uh, there's a young FBI agent, and she gets tasked with oh, trying man. to track down what's happening. And it is so good. Really? It, okay. I highly oh. recommend it. Yeah, I saw the trailer. I don't. I don't know how much I should say about it. I, I, I don't say not, too much because I'm intrigued now. Um, it's it got great reviews. I pretty sh- if Joey saw it, I'm sure he could tell you how awesome it was. Huh. It it's. Yeah, if you see Nicholas, if you see Nicholas Cage in this makeup, you're gonna you're gonna have nightmares. Ah, and like okay. I said, he's only in it for five or six minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just saw Renfield with uh, Nicholas Cage. That was a lot of fun. Right. That was a Sidekick. lot of fun. I heard it was good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, it's got to be streaming now because well, I don't know. It was, no, not it was yet. Pretty, it's come. It's soon, but not pretty, yet. Pretty, pretty recent. Yeah, I just saw it. A, I don't know, a month and a half ago. No, it's on my list to check out. I definitely because I remember seeing the trailers for this thing and I was like, Nick, oh, I got to see Nick, this. Nick, I think I think you really like it. Yeah. That's that's all I got that's for, for right. cuz I was going to say you know pretty much the same as you with the the late 70s early 80s movies yeah. so yeah um not a whole lot of like slasher movies like in the 2010s it seems like yeah. that decade there wasn't much every once in a while you get a movie that like it's a slasher movie on the international space station i'm like i wonder who did it there's only four people here is bob <laughs> is it you nope there's yeah. blood floating by you bob you know, it was a, a fun one that just popped into my head. I don't know if it would crack my top ten, but there was a movie that came out uh, called Urban Legends. You remember that one? Mm. And yes. they kind of talked about various urban legends about how, like, uh, now I can't remember if this was in the actual movie or not. I think it was. I think it was where uh, there's a report on the television that uh, someone had escaped an insane asylum or whatever, and they're like, do not leave your ho- home until the police apprehend this lunatic or this woman uh, – needs cigarettes she like ran out of cigarettes she's like i'll just step out real quick to get cigarettes so she like goes to a store gets runs in gets some cigarettes comes out then she realizes she's out of gas so she stops at a gas station and then the gas station attendant comes out to pump her gas and he's acting really weird and really suspicious and uh all of a sudden he, he takes the gas pump handle and smashes her driver's side door and he grabs her and he's pulling her out of the car and she's screaming and screaming and all of a sudden you see the back door of the car opened up the killer was in her back seat and the gas station attendant was saving her and so it's those types of uh urban legends that were in this movie and it was it was kind of fun it was it was a lot of fun. that's one thing the script where they go like how do we sell them like let the director do that because otherwise like ma'am there's someone in the back seat you could have told me that without trying to like <laughs> smash my window and scare the hell out of me yeah um oh just one more just for uh, really quick uh came out in 82 recently watched uh slumber party massacre <laughs> oh that's that's kind of a classic when i was when i was looking is it at so bad it's good lists. type yes, of thing yes. oh it's Have again plan nine uh, from I outer think space it was one of those movies i saw in the theaters it, with friends when it oh, came oh. out and i probably haven't seen it since the, but the, the yeah. killer has a a drill gun oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and i read about it it was originally supposed to be like a uh, kind of a comedy, mm. but then at the last minute they decided not to. But there's <laughs> there's still elements in it that they left in. Yeah, yeah. So it's intentionally and unintentionally Sleep funny. Over, but, yeah. What was the name of it? Slumber, Slumber Party Massacre. Massacre. Yeah, I remember that one. And the, then like I said, you know, uh, you don't know anything about the killer except he he's a he got out of prison. He's there's no motivation. He <laughs> just he just killed. He just drills people. That's yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta be careful how you say that. Yeah. 
Um, oh. hey, it was, there was it, prom it's night. The 80s. It's Jamie the 80s. Lee Curtis, and uh, yeah, there was just so many. George, anything we're missing? Anything you want to add as we wind things down? I think I'm going to put the, I'm going to put at least a summary in my mind on this. The reason that people go to to scary movies is is there's a there's a palpable sense of dopamine. There's okay. adventure. There's mystery. There's intrigue, and the evidence like. If you're running like in uh, Jurassic Park isn't a slasher movie, but you're still being chased by something, right? Um, there's still you know movies where the, the 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 tidal wave comes in and it's chasing everybody down a street, mm. and everybody's running for their lives. And there's something there. There's something far more insidious. Insidious is actually a great movie. Uh, <laughs> there's insidious that when you have somebody in your house who has it out for you and they're in the dark. Yeah. And it's just this perfect, like, we're just, it, 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 it hits way back into our, our, our reptilian brain. Yeah. And it's not like a roller coaster where you're scared, but, you know, you're going to make it. I don't know what it is, but. Um, I think there is a similarity to that because you're, you know, how do you, how do you take in the world through your eyes and your ears and, yes. and senses? So when, when I'm in a movie theater, it feels very real to me when I'm, in, you know, the lights are off and you're staring at the screen and. You're taking in the world through this screen, but you know that by sitting in the movie theater, you're safe, that you're going to walk out of there and laugh it off and go, wow, that was crazy. So it's very similar to a roller coaster where you know you have a harness on and you're going to be okay and you're going to step off the roller coaster at some point. And I think that's the appeal of horror movies and slasher flicks is you experience this anarchy for 90 minutes or two hours, but you know that when you step out, the world's going to go back to normal and everyone's going to be safe. So, so I've heard a number of times that guys who jump out of airplanes or wear those squirrel suits and things, they just, or who are, um, thrill seekers, thrill seekers. Yeah. One of the things that they just love, if they can't get a thrill, they'll actually go out and get cocaine or opium or whatever. They'll try to find some heavy drug nice. to kind of give them that excitement because there's nothing like it. And I think there's people out there. My brother-in-law is one of them. Um, who's a super cool guy. Uh, he, uh, he collects just tons, tons and tons of, of slasher movies. Right. He is just a junkie. And I think that is a, a correct term because you right. get that dopamine clip yeah. and he gets excited about things coming out. Yeah. But there's nothing quite like it. I mean, I guess you could watch Schindler's List or something like that. Or, you yeah. know, Saving Private Ryan where there's an element of realism. Right. And like, oh, yeah. God, that's terrible. But there's nothing like there's nothing like having somebody who's got it out for you that's in your house and you're you know you're you're running away or you're trying to save somebody and it doesn't make any sense yeah it makes no sense at all and so all of a sudden you, you your brain goes under your seat yeah yeah and uh and it's just you, what what the movie's done is they've bypassed all the logic and they've gone straight to your reptilian brain and says yes run now or you die yeah, yeah. and that's all you know and the they're like flight, okay yeah. turn knob open door why can't she oh no yeah yeah and then and then and then i have to say a second thing is i love in in horror movies i love rooting for the bad guy love it like get her get her she deserves it she deserves it where's that no no no. you got a longer knife than that wait what what do you do oh she's got a gun you gotta get past that no just okay look take your bullet earlier you know when they're doing stupid things at some point you're like just die already just die like uh you know the girl don't worry she'll trip (laughs) <laughs> the girl with the big boobs has to die. I'm sorry. That's all there is to it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, a glimpse into George Johnson. <laughs> so then I, I don't mean it, but I you know. know. So I have two quick things then. One is, is Sons and Lambs considered a slasher flick or more thriller? That seems to be more there psychological is, horror to it. But there um, is that scene. There is there's some two or stuff three in there, scenes yeah. in there which are pretty bad, but specifically the one where he gets out of the cage. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's psychological horror okay. is how I would describe that. And the that second film. one, and this will apply more to you and George because you, you grew up around the time, the late 60s and especially the 70s, there was a time that wasn't, there was a lot of actual serial killers, Son of Sam, mm-hmm. all that was oh, going yes. So that was Zodiac in the, killer, that was in the yeah. zeitgeist. Casey was the out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then people were like, oh my God, yeah, I could actually think you walk into an empty parking structure and the shadows are there, and you go, no, it's just me. I'm I'm working in the late shift, so what? Who else could be here? Yeah. Do you look in the back seat of your car before you get into the car? Oh, I can't tell you how much that. Once you've seen a movie like that, yeah. it it burns this. Like you got to check the back seat of your car. Mm-hmm. 
you got to walk quickly to, through a parking lot that, uh, after after hours, especially if there's you know a light that's flickering. If there's a light that's flickering, and I've yeah. been to I've been to parking lots where the lights flickering, I'm like. I guys, I just let me, you know, if there's women, I'm like, I'm going to run ahead. I'm going to make sure that because it freaks me out, even though it's ridiculous. I've Especially seen, here uh, in Michigan when it snows too on those snowy nights and you can't see when the yeah. light gets and it's lost. it's quieter. Yeah. Well, oh, what you want to look for is I, I've seen this in movies and it's very subtle, but like say, a, you know, couples walk into their car, they're having a conversation, you see the car in the background and the windows are fogged up. And it's like, ooh, okay, why are those windows fogged up? So you got to look for stuff like that in real life. Maybe that's what we get out of these films. It's it's like a training manual for real life. But it's that reptilian it's brain thing that you were talking about where, you, like, look, there's I'm in a snowy parking lot. There's no other footprints. It's just mine. <laughs> there isn't anyone at the car. But then again, it was snowing. Did it cover up the footprints? You, you overwrite <laughs> the logic. It's like, no, there's no, it's just your footprints. Look at yours. I, I got to say another thing. I hate to do this. Um, I've seen some of these movies when I was in my 20s and 30s, and all I can think of is, damn it, why didn't I see this when I was nine? Because it's a, di- I know this sounds crazy, but when you see these movies that scare the living shiz out of you, after a while, you get into your 14, 15, 16, 17, it's like, this is a rush. This is so much fun. <laughs> but when you're nine, you 10, 11, and this may sound twisted, <laughs> look into my brain. Yeah, I know you're going to say. It's so amazingly real, and you have to oh, get yeah. through it, and yeah, that's yeah. actually pretty fun. But nowadays, <laughs> when you see a slasher movie, you walk out and you're like, dang it, that just doesn't have this impact that it did when I was yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12. It just doesn't. You get up to go to the bathroom, and the end of your hallway is dark. <laughs> and now you're like, it's a shadow movie? No, it's not. When I, mean, I saw the Twilight Zone, the movie, and there was – most of it's good, but there's one, there was one, uh, or no, it was creep show. There was one, uh, vignette, which scared the living hell out of which me. Which one was it? It was the one. <laughs> Not the monster in the box. Yes, it is. It is? Yes, it's it great. is. Because I saw it when I was great. like 10 and I was over to sleepover. Adrian Barbeau, another screen queen. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, and oh, she's so great. And the yeah. monster. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, I it's seen it. no. That's, that's one you want to watch. Oh, that is yeah. so fun. Yeah. But most of it's garbage. I got to be honest. That's the best. That yeah. one's the best. No, one that was to me. my favorite one. Yeah. The, I will the, say this though. The, the Friday the Thirteenth. I remember the very first time I saw it, and again I was a teenager, maybe twelve, thirteen, if that. I screamed out loud at one point. I was like embarrassed. Like something happened on screen. <laughs> I screamed out loud. Do you guys it. ever recalling screaming out loud at a movie? I don't think no, so. and it's funny because they play you like a fiddle. Yeah. They get you to that point and 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 your 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 ability to handle this suddenly gets and that's why people want to go to the movies together because it's a shared trauma bond. Well, you want to talk <laughs> about it after the fact. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm gonna share a little interesting med- medical tidbit. My my old um, um, med school mentor said this. He's like do you guys know why in the got, get, when you get to the horror in the seventies days they always had to go to the ch- 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 ch. they had to set you up for that because yeah, yeah. you had to build up yeah <laughs> they have exactly they have to start giving so you know the things because when the jump scares happen yeah. you defecate on the parasympathetic system so people were literally <laughs> scaring the shit out of themselves yeah. you scared the that that's where that phrase came from you scared yeah. the out of me. You know what's interesting <laughs> that you said that? It reminds me of a story. I, I had my young nephew in my car with me years ago. He was probably three or four at the time. He's in the back seat, and it was around Halloween. I was playing a Halloween CD that had, you know, music from the Peanuts and, you know, all different kinds of stuff. And this is this is really interesting to me. The theme from Halloween started playing, and it's just a couple of notes. It was played by John Carpenter. That dun 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 and yeah. my nephew was like, Uncle Joe, change this. <laughs> and so I skipped to the next song, but I'm like, it was just music. It was just notes. But those collection of notes, that arrangement of notes, scared the shiz out of my young nephew. And I thought that was fascinating yeah. that you could trigger those emotions with sound effects and music. Even and- the creepy quarry music in The Omen. <laughs> oh, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> well, I think that aliens has a great scene where they steal and it, it, everything's quiet and they're all standing in the middle and they're like they're like looking at this thing that that is a, a radar thing and it sends out a radar pulse the motion that, detector the oh, motion that detector sound effect that, sound, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and you hear this t- they're in the room t- man t- 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 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And who is that? That's um Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. It's <laughs> impossible, man. I do right That's here in the room, man. And you hear this? You, there's no. I don't think there's any music. If there is, it's not as big it's of a just deal. That sound but it's that. that it's like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It come yeah, yeah. to me. And I, it I, has I, that sound, like. Yeah. Like the sound, it's getting closer. <laughs> yes, like, I'm like the motion detector sound. That's <laughs> that. To, but if they had just had that's that fun. with no sound, and it was just them standing there, I'd be like, no. But the fact yeah. that it's going. Ta, 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 yeah. It's like yeah. oh, I don't know yeah, what yeah. it is. What is it that? And, and I've gotten goose pimples. It'd be but, fun to have that job in Hollywood, like the sound effects and the music and setting up tension. And it's amazing stuff, to me that yeah. John Carpenter was able to to, to tap yeah, into this. So na, 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 there are there's certain it's, notes that are you associated take the old, with The old uh, CBS mystery theater. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. With the cello and the door. Yeah, yeah. Or it was the cello <laughs> that scared the living daylights out of me. Hammer yeah, used yeah. to do that for their movies with Dracula. Ooh, yeah. Like the high pitch, like you're like, oh, here, yeah, this one you get killed. Certain notes, really interesting. Or John Williams with Jaws. When you hear that music, oh, yeah. like get out of the water. <laughs> or, or keep going. No, I'm joking. No, <laughs> no, you no, guys no. run a good roll. <laughs> All right, let's wind things down. Uh, before we wrap up, like I said, we're going to do two more Halloween related podcasts before the end of the month. Next episode in two weeks is going to be uh, Movie Monsters. Movie monsters. So put some thought into that topic. Uh, of course, you know, we got the classic universal monsters and stuff like that. Uh, this was inspired by a book that I had picked up recently by uh, the director, John Landis, who put together a collection of his favorite movie monsters. So I thought that would be an interesting topic for our next podcast. Yeah. I just have one other thing. A yep. shameless plug for the uh, for the upcoming um John, uh, Joe, uh, Joe is doing film the uh, film festival just for yes. 30 seconds. Yeah, so in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to kick off, I think it's the 17th, we're going to kick off the Owen TV Film Festival. Uh, it's a film challenge where you have about a weekend to write, shoot, edit, and turn in a 10-minute short film, 10 minutes or less. Uh, every film will be shown on the movie screen at the Oxford 7 Movie Theater, which I think is the best part of the whole thing. Yes, it People is. get to bring in friends and family and see their movies on the big screen. Uh, we will have judges watch every film and award uh, cash prizes to the top three uh, filmmakers. Uh, we have two guys uh, that have won the last two years in a row, so someone needs to knock them off their pedestal. Yeah, uh, talking to movies, you, Vinny uh, and Kale. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's October every year, a lot of these movies seem to have a, a horror theme to it, which is awesome, but yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to have that. Oh, I so, thought there was a horror theme. I well, that's had, not mandated. Well, because no, it, not because at all. Well, one year you did a, a pumpkin, and then the next year you did the graveyard. And Yeah, but we've kind of gotten away from right. that. So, yeah, yeah. That's so, why I went to the abandoned mental institution for my project. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so go to orionontv.org to sign up today or give us a call uh, at ONTV to register. We're hoping uh, the, the more teams that take part, the bigger the prize yes. money. So uh, spread the word. And uh, put a team together, and, uh, and let's do this. In two we in this in, at the end of October thirtieth, the live episode. And then we're gonna go live on October thirtieth, uh, right from this room with our just our uh, Halloween favorite Halloween spooky movies. So. Yes, and we have right. Bill O'Reilly in the room saying, "F it, we'll do it live." <laughs> are we gonna Are we gonna have food and drinks in the, in the studio? We could. I, uh, Wait, are we gonna have a studio? Can't audience? spill anything. Uh, I don't know. We we brought oh, two guys hold on, uh, hold on. last time, and that filled this room up. So, well, couldn't we do it from the big, 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 big room and put out some? Possibly, possibly. but we need to have at least what twenty people. Anyway, uh, never mind. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we will see you in two weeks with uh, your favorite horror movie monsters. We'll see you then. Come to the movies. Watch Charlie Chaplin. And put some sunshine into your day Forget the hard times Come to the movies And try to laugh your troubles away